I must admit, I had a chance of reviewing Netflix's Dracula weeks prior, but passed it up. Dracula, that's all the listing said. Unfortunately, I didn't give it much of a chance until I heard some babbling, saw some trailers, and heard it was a refreshing, odd take on the character. Three episodes later, Dracula is on Lost and Found. Shall we begin? Before setting off, thanks to my Patreon supporters for supporting this channel. For as little as a dollar, you can contribute to this channel and help me develop better content. For as little as a questionable $5 box from Taco Bell, you can get exclusive reviews on the latest films and save yourself diarrhea. With me constantly in fear of demonetization, this little bit can really help. But for now, let's get back to the review. Bubbles of vanity. Dracula was released on BBC One and Netflix on January 1st of 2020. It was developed by Mark Gaddis and Stephen Moffat. Both gentlemen have extensive history writing for BBC, including working on the famed Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock series. The duo paired together with the hopes of making Dracula the hero of his own story, rather than a shadowy villain he has been portrayed as before. Like their work on Sherlock, the team aimed to be both faithful and faithless to the character, adding to the mythology but still working from it. The series lasts a total of three episodes, all three of which are well over an hour, making for a TV movie-like feel. The cast is led by Clace Bang and Dolly Wells who are quite phenomenal. His charming Bavarian accent was the only interesting thing about him. You left no one at the wheel. Do you have no self-control? Bang plays the villainous Count Dracula. His portrayal, both with the writing and the actor's performance, is where the series will either win or lose viewers. Fortunately, the drapes are very thick. For those expecting a menacing portrayal similar to Gary Oldman's take on the character from the 1992 film, we'll have to look elsewhere. <laughs> While Bang's Dracula is menacing, I'm going to miss you. I'll spare you the heartache. Too kind. He is at times, uh, punny? I find it hard to credit that any supernatural entity would leave such a quantity of blood behind, unless, of course, it has drunk its fill. It's the sea air. Makes one, um, ravenous. I'm afraid I'm very careful with what I eat. Me too. Simply remain on my side and I shall absorb you. The actor's approach to the character is absolutely entertaining, but can be so over the top I can see it losing some audience members. Mm. I have to murder a child. Bang is somewhere between Tommy Wiseau. I was working as a busboy in a hotel and uh, um, the Count from Sesame Street. <laughs> I am the Count! They call me the Count because I love to count things! And an actually high quality performance. Um, they are without... They are without flavor! He carries the character with so much gravitas, so much oomph that you become forgiving of his rather hammier moments. Oh. You absolutely feel intimidated by his presence, but it can also make you smile when you least expect it. I'm undead, I'm not unreasonable. Oh, 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 that was a first. His charming Dracula can win you over, and dare I say, you almost root for him sometimes. Perhaps even more surprising is the wonderful Dolly Wells. I want to see the limit of your capability. The point of this experiment. Bang's performance at Dracula might leave viewers on the fence, but Wells is simply fantastic as Sister Agatha Van Helsing. Tear you apart. Not from out there, you couldn't. But what's stopping you? If the name sounds familiar then, well, that's all I'm gonna say. She plays the series protagonist and is a wonderful counter to the theatrical count. Without getting too social justice-y, the change of making Van Helsing a woman was something that caught me off guard. Professor Abraham Van Helsing is a renowned character and the arch enemy to Dracula. Now that you have learned what you have learned, it would be well for you to return to your own country. I prefer to remain and protect those whom you would destroy. This change isn't bothersome once you see Dolly Wells fully embrace the character. She stands toe to toe with Dracula, not just on a physical level, but a psychological one. Biting my lip. The two battle it out in almost a chess-like fashion throughout. You could tell without a doubt that Gaddis and Moffat enjoyed writing these interactions between these two. I really thought we'd won. If it's any comfort, Agatha, you came closer than anyone. 
Like previously mentioned, the three episodes feel like high production television movies. While they do run together, they do just enough to stay on their own. The standout for me is the second episode which takes place almost entirely on the Dietmer, an old ship at sea. Dracula boasts some pretty impressive gothic sets. The ship set is one of the more impressive ones, with a real disgusting, grimy, kind of lived in feeling. Bang's stature of 6'4", combined with these small sets, makes for some well directed claustrophobic moments with this character. Without getting spoilery, the second episode ends on one hell of a what the f moment. From there, episode 3 takes an Additional turn. For those that fall in love with the age old mythology that is being built in the series, you might be disappointed with the jump the series makes here. The cliffhanger in the second episode opens up a ton of possibilities, and while it was an interesting exploration in the third episode, it did leave me a just a tad disappointed. Regardless, even when the show isn't the best in writing, it can still be bloody entertaining. I am clumsy. From a technical standpoint, Dracula is well made. The series was shot on a lot of various locations in Slovakia. There are countless sets that were built and the makeup design throughout is just simply fantastic. For a show with deep gothic horror elements, the first two episodes perfectly nail this atmosphere. Cinematography ranges from good to excellent and really can feel like a movie at times. Dracula is a bloody entertaining show. 29. As good a day as any, Johnny. Good night. The show does alter some of the mythology to Dracula, but nothing nearly as offensive as a sparkling vampire. No! The writing takes elements of intrigue to the character and fleshes out these ideas. It takes a lot of leaps in logic, but builds up on the traits of Dracula to make him far more interesting than a looming figure in the dark. The same can be said for Wells Van Helsing, who becomes quite a fascinating figure. The real question is if audiences can buy into the fang and cheek approach that drifts into gothic horror and sometimes laugh out loud comedy. A foul, stinking, slouching monstrosity. We can disguise us as fairly well as ordinary people. Somehow, at least in my opinion, Gaddis and Moffat do a good enough job balancing these to make an entertaining show. <laughs> what a story, Mark. I do not drink. Why? If you're struggling to find a new entertaining Netflix adventure, you found one. Hey Tots, this video was a blast to make. I hope you all enjoy it. Huge shout out to my new Patreon supporters and everyone for continuing to support me. The pat on the back means so much to me. I hope those that aren't give a consideration to supporting me. See you all in the next video.